Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and welcome back to my NeoFly career in Microsoft Flight Sim where I think I've discovered a bit of a problem with NeoFly with regard to my plan to fly eastward around the world. And that problem is the fact that it doesn't seem to understand how to go across the 180 east to 180 west divide the anti-meridian. And I've come to this conclusion because if you take a look, I've got the distance at max and we have flights that are 4,000 nautical miles here and they will go eastward or southward and get really close to the 180 east point uh, and where the coordinates have to flip over, which is sort of a weird mathematical thing when you think about it. And it uh, takes just a slight bit of coding to figure out but uh yeah the um, the issue is that none of these flights are going in that direction even though some of the flights are long enough that they could get to like honolulu and stuff like that or the aleutian islands or anchorage you know with 4,000 nautical miles from where i am in japan we could get to anchorage i think so yeah well i'll do the best i can which in this case is to go for north in Japan. And I think, I mean, there's really only one flight out of all of them that's going in the direction I want. And that's this one. It doesn't pay very well, but we're sending flowers to Akita. We will still have to figure out what to do after that. Hopefully there's a way to get across, but I'm not seeing it right now. So I'm picking this one up. And for the first time in this series, I'm going to use SimBrief in the Sim to plan things out. And let's just say, well, it's got to be nighttime because of the time that I'm doing this flight. So we're not going to see anything for this flight. I'll just go higher up. Not as high as it can go, but... Not sightseeing levels. Okay, import to sim. And then we'll see about beyond ATC. I'll need to start on the ramp. Well, since it's a nighttime flight, I'll skip the startup. I'll do that with something else. We'll start on the runway instead. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Okay. Ah, oh, they have it started, but they don't have the lights on. Need the flashlight. And we really act to have some of the carb heat. Okay, that's fine. Little question mark on engine two on the oil temp. They're all question marks. Cow flaps a little bit less. We need three degrees for takeoff. Okay, let's see about beyond ATC. Oh, we don't have a tower here. Let's just request IFR clearance. Romeo Alpha 412 requesting IFR clearance. Romeo Alpha 412 holding for release at runway 11. Romeo Alpha 412, release before departure. Clearance void if not off by 18350. If not off by 18350, contact no later than 18450. Time now 1830. Frequency change approbat. Cleared for departure, runway 11, Romeo Alpha 412. Okay. Uh, Gus luck off.
Oh, I'm surprised since the flight plan is in the sim that it didn't get into Sky for sim immediately. Transporter from dispatch. Fly safe. Okay, we are on course and climbing now. One two four decimal nine five roll me off of a one two. Tokyo controlled is roll me off of four one two climbing at uh, eleven thousand five hundred feet to flight level one five zero. I don't actually have any ATIS right now. Romeo Alpha four one two Tokyo controlled identified. No. No, we are not doing ADC with the game here. No, we're not requesting flight following. I don't know why it does that automatically. Oh, uh, it's gotta make me... Well, hopefully we'll just ignore it. I don't know. But if we're on Tokyo control frequency, there's no way we can avoid it, I guess. Oh, it's gonna bug me. And then I have to change the frequency. Okay, that's flight level 150. Okay, we can't see a whole lot out here. <laughs> Yep. It's dark. Well, it looks like our situation is somewhat worse here. Well, ATC keeps bugging me, but not beyond ATC, the stock ATC. But it's gone from yellow to orange on the engine health there. And, well, this is the situation as far as a stress analyzer, but that's pretty normal. I can't ever get the carburetor quite right. But we've got some icing here. So I've got the carburetor de-icers on. Uh, we have to watch out for the de-icing fluid. The anti-icing fluid is limited. And I think um, I think we need some other de-icing for the... Is there window heat somewhere? Let me hunt for that. Windshield and the heat and red on anti-icing. Well... Let's try some of that. Let's have some cockpit heat as well. No, oh, I'll turn off the carburetor de-icer for now. But we'll get maintenance when I land. Eventually, I'll be kinder to the poor engines. Not this time, though. I'm not really pushing them that hard, though, considering that they're aggravated. I mean, the critical stuff, the oil temp isn't in the yellow. The carb air isn't in the yellow. A lot of pressure is a bit low. But that should be okay. We're not using the water anyway right now. Tokyo Control, Romeo Alpha 412 is ready for descent. Romeo Alpha 412, Yeoi Whiskey, runway 10, descend to 9,000 feet, QNH 1021. Romeo Alpha 412, Contact Shurikami, approach 120.65. 120.65, roll me off of 412. Shurikami approach, this is Romeo Alpha 412, uh, currently at 
flight level 120, descending to 9,000 feet, uh, 12 nautical miles from Yayoi. Maintain 2,000 feet at Brico, Arnav 10, Romeo Alpha 412. Clear to land, runway 10. Now oh, coming in a bit fast here. Oh, that's a little bit shuddery. Okay. Touchdown. At least it was soft. Taxi to parking and shut down your engine. Romeo Alpha 412, exit right at Tango 2. Well, I hope that's Tango 2 up there. Unfortunately, Beyond ACC can't address the gate system here. And show me which one is right. Um, wonder if that's one over there, but I think this one is best over here. It looks like a custom airport because it says Akita there, <laughs> so that's nice. Okay, we have arrived. Transporter, cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Okay, well, I don't want to switch everything off immediately. I would like the lights on for now. Transporter from dispatch. Cargo unloaded and checked. It is always a pleasure to work with you. All right, we got our money, uh, but how about a flight across the Pacific? You are clear to start your engine. Any luck? Or at least somewhere closer? All right, so I've waited a few days in order to try to get some better flight, and there are no better flights. All of the flights are going the wrong way. I want to go eastward, they're all going westward or south. So that's not great. It means that basically in order to cross the anti-meridian, uh, because it doesn't understand how to generate flights across the anti-meridian, uh, I am going to have to bite the cost of the flight. And it, uh, since I can't even get one to Kamchatka now, I need to take the cost of, what is it, about seven hours of flight? I mean, if we can really fly fast, that would be great, but seven hours of flight times $61,000 per flight hour, let's not even talk about the fuel cost, is 420000 Now, uh, so basically this seven hour flight that I'm envisioning is one to the Aleutian Islands, P-A-D-K, uh, which is at uh, Adak, uh, A-D-A, there. Attic Naval Air Station. I think that's our best bet. It's got a good long runway, 7,848 feet, and it's got fuel. Uh, so yeah, that's where I want to land. It will be on the other side of the anti-meridian, uh, so we won't have that problem anymore, hopefully. And all the flights will be going eastward because, well, it can't cross the anti-meridian, so it can't give us anything westward. So yeah. That is the goal, but it's a long flight from from where we are in Akita. And I don't have anything to do on that flight. 
so I am going to pick up some cargo. So I've uh, looked for some, some cargo here, and it looks like PADK wants some beer and magazines. So that's what we're going to give them. Uh, they are fragile goods, uh, so I have to land softly. But 13,000 pounds of beer. And I'm going to just buy that for 92,000. So that's another risk involved. And then 7,700 pounds of magazines. And um, I hope, well, I mean, that's, but that's pure cargo space. The fuel isn't counted in the cargo space in this case. So that's okay. Um, so we'll buy that. And I'll be expecting to be able to sell them, hopefully at a better price than that. It said profit. Um, uh, okay, well, it says that there should be a profit, hopefully. And I'm just going to pump up all the fuel. So we're going to be flying heavy out from Makita. And it has no idea where I'm flying. But that's all right. I have my flight plan here, thanks to Simbrief. So I'm just going to generate the flight. It says max payload only 17,000 now, but it's not higher than my maximum takeoff weight. So what does this mean? Um, how much fuel did I actually purchase? I did purchase all of this fuel. We're going for it. We're going for it. Live. I might adjust the time away from live. It turns out that it's dark over there, but... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I do not want to land in the dark. Not in the Aleutian Islands. I'm also not going to be doing Beyond ATC on this flight because this is beyond my patience for talking to ATC without a co-pilot helping. Okay. We have to make sure that the cargo is the cargo. Okay, it's happy now. 98% it says here. So here it's not unhappy. So, okay. Landing lights on. Oops, no, not retracted. On. Gust lock off. We need some carb heat. Oh, gust lock, come on. Let's go. It's a long flight, though. Got some flaps. I'm going to push the engines a little bit on this takeoff because we're heavy. And we are in the air. Enjoy your personal flight, pilot. You can search personal for flight. You land. Here up. Backing down. And off we go. To Alaska. And to the Western Hemisphere. For the first time in this series. Climbing gently. Bit of a headwind. Oh, we've got a lot of icing. It's cold. The window's already icing. I had to put the carb heat to really high levels. It's probably not good for the long trip. Pretty far north and everything. And it is getting to be winter. Oh no, that line is not going the right direction. Oh shoot. Even this doesn't understand the anti-meridian. 
Why can't people code these things properly? Let me put it this way. I know how to do it because I've had to do it for Kerbal Space Program launch and re-entry scripts. So I'm not going to try to explain it here right now. I mean, the outside temperature is negative 20 degrees Celsius, apparently. I didn't even ask for the next waypoint. I don't know why. I don't know why I apparently asked for that information. Uh, everything's cold again. Just tell me you want the car bear at 100% then. So, Aomori is back there. We've got uh, another sort of peninsula of Honshu up ahead. After that, we will have departed the main island of Japan and then we'll be over Hokkaido. Negative 25 degrees Celsius out there. Okay, last little bit of Honshu here. Okay, I'm gonna turn and we'll be slightly more along with the wind. Not quite along with the wind, but just a little bit better. Alright, progress report mostly through Hokkaido now. A little bit off from the track because of the wind, but we passed Obihiro. And soon I will be through Japan and on to the Aleutian Islands. Unfortunately the track isn't on here. So far, well, carburetor temperature and oil temperature, but that's normal. I usually keep an eye on the stuff over here and it's not in the yellow. Well, the carburetor is a little bit close. And it's really cold outside. I'm pushing the engines hard because it's a long trip and I don't want to take more, more time than I need to. We'll see how well that works out for me. Plenty of fuel. Probably could have carried a little bit less fuel. Time for another update. We have definitely passed Hokkaido. I forget which of these islands are part of Japan. I think these are. But... I don't know. Well, UHSB, that would not be. So that one isn't. This one... UIUN. Probably not, then. Because if it's Japan, it'd be an RJ thing. So, uh, well, we're already dealing with the Russians, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but along these islands we go. And... Yes, the mysterious path ahead. On the right side, we're going a little bit more with the wind now. Not completely with the wind, but a little bit better. Uh, so the ground speed is now 309 knots. I haven't done anything as far as the engine power is concerned. It's just that the wind is better. So more of a tailwind, 49 knots altogether right now. And according to the GPS thing, uh, we've still got more than 1500 nautical miles. engine is still looking like that with the carb temp in yellow and the oil temp in yellow. Well, on there. On the actual dials there, are not. They're just on the safe side of the yellow range there. Alright, circumstances have changed somewhat. The wind is a whopping 96 knots, but it's sort of askew. It's still a still somewhat of a tailwind. Uh, and it's certainly helping because our ground speed is 345 knots but I will have to sort of turn a little bit to adjust because it is pushing us a little bit off to the side
to the north instead of where we're supposed to be going. So we lose about five knots there. We're down to 340, but 340 is still a lot better than I had before. As we change latitudes, the nature of the wind changes somewhat. Currently 1300 nautical miles left, 1318, 1317. So less than four hours if the wind keeps up and stays pleasant. At the moment, this is our plane. And we're just dealing with a whole lot of Pacific. Not as much Pacific as we could be dealing with, but still. It's a chunk of Pacific. Well, we seem to have hit a certain amount of problem. We've got some clouds here, and it somehow killed one of my engines um, and we're going really slow so I'm gonna descend at this point and see if uh, at least we'll get some speed back so I want to get out of the cloud well it's not visibly on fire well, as I suggested earlier on, if uh, we got into a situation where it was going to be dark at the destination, I'm probably going to change the time in this case. Uh, and that, especially since we seem to have an engine problem, I'm going to definitely do that. Got a rainbow here, though. So I'm going to go off of real time. Oh, maybe it was the fuel. Uh, that tank emptied first Six. probably shouldn't have the supercharger high when we're doing this oh oh it restarted okay so it was a fuel uh, fuel feed problem it's gonna have to get warmed up pretty quick though and now we're actually climbing again because now we have extra power. So momentary lapse there due to the fuel situation, but we're now on the main tanks instead of the alt tanks. Oil temperature and pressure is a catastrophic stress range, but that's because it's still warming up. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, we got some interesting cloud layers, I guess. There's another cloud layer above, and it's a very solid one, apparently. We're sandwiched. Alright, I guess it's time for a little update. Uh, we are 476 nautical miles away from PADK and things have been working out just fine so far. Uh, the engine stress visualizer is the way it has been. Uh, the carburetor temperature and oil temperature are in yellow. Uh, those all read okay. And we have uh, 54 knot crosswind right now, so I have to turn a little bit to the south because it's pushing us north. And the BMEP is at 150, and our ground speed is 289. So about an hour and a half left as the DC-6A continues to chug along. We are not yet across the anti-meridian but it'll be relief a relief once we get there. The sun is trying to send on me again, and so I might reset the time again, unfortunately. I think in an hour and a half it'll probably be down. So, that is the situation on this very long flight, the longest of this series. 
All right, we are now about 20 minutes away from landing, and we have crossed the Anti-Meridian. Uh, and unfortunately, Sky for Sim does not seem to be drawing the line right, but maybe that's because of the nature of our original flight plan. So, it's still sort of messed up. Maybe if I load it again... No, I think it's just because of the departure airport that it's just going to be messed up like that. Ground speed's only 261 because now we have a headwind going in this direction. It's quite late where I am and uh, I don't generally fly very well at this time uh, but I'll try my best. We are heavily loaded with cargo and we have some extra fuel because I decided to put that in so we'll be landing a bit heavy. I do also have to land softly or less than 200 feet per minute Engines seem fine for now. Aside from that little hiccup with engine 4, we've been running for 6.4 hours. Obviously I had reset the engines before deciding to fly. Well, the next island over is Adak Island. So not this one. This one is Kanaga Island. Overboost and... Okay, well, you know what. Let's just turn off... Uh, or turn the superchargers low. There, everything looks a little bit better. Oh, this is a dock island. Well, there are some smaller islands around, but... Generally, this is a dock island. We'll be flying alongside the airport first before coming in. You can see the airport there. Alright, gear down. Into the sunset though. That's not great. Don't super duper like that. right into the sunset, in fact. Forgot about that aspect of things. And at least right now, it's just a crosswind. A 24-knot crosswind. Uh, it said, the Ada said that it was 9 knots at the surface, so that's not too bad. Still a pretty strong wind right now. Okay, it's getting a little bit better. Oh, I forgot the landing lights and I can't reach them right now. Must land softly. Okay. Nice landing, pilot. Thank you. Contact ground for your parking assignment, then shut down your engine. I don't know where the parking is. I guess that area looks promising. You know what? It's been a long flight. I'm parking right here. On the snow. I think it is snow. But we are here. Okay, can I deliver the cargo? Let's find out. At long last. Look at how far my money has gone down. I only have 260,000 because of all the running cost. Uh, the flight, the rented aircraft running cost is 440,000 just to get me over here. But maybe I can sell some stuff to make up for it. Okay, buying... Alright, so... Let's 
See, I don't. I think I was supposed to get more than that, but yeah, I want to sell all the beer. Am I gonna be left with some beer? Is that what happened? Okay, seventy magazines. I think I got left with some beer. Gosh darn it, P A D K. Got 155 beers left. Shucks. I'm gonna have to find some other place that will buy beer. I thought they would buy all the beer. But they apparently weren't going to buy all the beer. Well, that brings me to 463,000. And that beer... Well, it'll, it'll get me some extra. I can't do math at this time. No, I mean, it's, what, 45,000. 45,000. So, not that much. But now, now finally, I get missions that go eastward. <laughs> the anti-meridian problem is over, finally. So, good. But it cost me a bit. And it's been a long flight. So, anyway, I'm, I'm here in Alaska on the Aleutian Islands at PADK. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.